Harbaugh scored already today on a, uh, a real gutty attempt at the corner of the end zone. He's running the ball well. That's uh, two other carries for him now. 14 yards that time. And a 17-0 Chicago lead. Hayward and Christian are in the lineup now. You just get the feeling from the Eagles that maybe their magic has just gone. The comeback uh, is going to be extremely tough today. Quick screen, Conway, left side. William Thomas up around the head to make the tackle on Curtis Conway. One reason they wanted to get Curtis Conway involved is because of his terrific speed and They've not had many yards after the catch. They're hopeful that he can give them that. That's why they throw those little screens to those uh, great athletes like Conway. Get them the ball out in uh, the open field. Get a couple of blockers in front of them and then turn them loose. Second down and seven. Anderson to the 34-yard line. You're seeing uh, again for the Eagles, uh, their secondaries being forced to make too many tackles. They banged up along that defensive line, and uh, big hitters Hopkins and Miano are in on almost every tackle now. Well, interesting too, Dan, when you've got the Chicago offense and the Eagle defense in 1993, you're talking about weakness against weakness, and yeah. not strength and strength. Yeah, and I think the turnovers have made uh, the Bears feel that perhaps they're the better team today. Third and four, Harbaugh. Chased right. And he dived for the first down and uh, apparently didn't quite get it at the 31-yard line. Now Harbaugh and uh, McMillan again. He's a feisty one, Mark McMillan. Well, at least Harbaugh's using his head and picking on the smallest guy right. out there. I'm not too sure about uh, picking a fight on the Eagles' sideline, though. Fourth and one. And the Bears are going to go for it. Britt Hager comes in, number 54. Hayward and Anderson in the backfield. Fourth and one, 17 nothing timeout called by Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh and Dave Wanstead will chat on the sideline. The Bears call time with 8.09 remaining third quarter. 17-0 Chicago, they face a fourth and less than a yard. Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles, seen his team ripped apart with departures through free agency, and now the Eagle defense faces a severe test. Fourth and about a foot and a half on the ninth play of this Chicago drive. That's Gedney in motion. Anderson comes right. Don't know. Do not know. The Eagles think they've helped. Uh, they think they got good enough penetration to force Anderson to bounce it to the outside, and then it looked like he lost his footing. And to get a measurement that uh, will only delay the obvious, because both uh, teams have already changed units on the field. You can hear uh, Brister's greeting from this crowd. short the uh, real key to this play was the play of Seth Joyner as he came off the corner closest to you right here watch Joyner's penetration as he beats Wojo across the line and gets inside there and there's just no place for Anderson to go excellent penetration by Millard as well so Bud Carson's defense equal to the task and a first down now with Bobby Brister handing it off to Herschel Walker and Dante Jones, number 53, is a part of that tackle. Dante Jones, who is occupying a position held with such, such talent by Mike Singletary over the years. Five years, Dante Jones was a backup to Mike Singletary. He said that Singletary has helped him as far as uh, playing behind him, studying his uh, study habits and his practice habits, uh, both on and off the field. Singletary was an excellent example of how to play the position. Second down and nine. Here's Brister. Flips oh. it left side. Oh, boy! Mark Carrier had it 
in his mitts. And Brister gets it in his ears. Yeah, and uh, the mitts just weren't uh, good enough to make this grab. Watch uh, Carrier right here as he's got his eyes on the quarterback. He's going to break in front of the receiver. And if he makes his catch, it, it's he's in the end zone. Brister looking that way the whole way, and Carrier drops a sure interception. Well, Bobby Brister was the darling of the radio talk shows in Philadelphia during this past week. I don't think he'll be tuning in this coming week unless things change. Third and nine. Right side. Oh, boy. He laid Calvin Williams out to dry that time, and Mark Carrier passed him a shot. Carrier could have gone right at the ribs. Yeah, and uh, you wonder how much that fine to Chuck Cecil and Phoenix affects uh, a player like Mark Carrier. Or maybe Carrier was just thinking about going for the ball instead, but that ball wasn't anywhere close to the receiver. Here's Jeff Fiegel's on the punt. It's a good one. Terry Obie with a fair catch makes the grab at the 21 and a half yard line. We've got 7-11 remaining in the third quarter of play at 17 nothing Chicago and they've got the ball we got 60 minutes and then baseball I she think, wrote I think that's it. <laughs> I believe that's correct talk about murdering a promo <laughs> yes he did second down and four Bobby Rister for the day, 16 of 31, 44, two fumbles, two interceptions, seven sacks. And we're working our way toward the two-minute warning. We've reached it. Two minutes remaining. 17 zip. Chicago leads. Harbaugh's been getting hammered pretty good by the Chicago press this year. This is a great day for Jim. 200 yards in total offense. And the most impressive play may have been his shortest play, that one-yard run where he had to uh, take on a couple of eagles at the goal line to get in the end zone. Pretty good afternoon for Harbaugh. Knew if he went for the touchdown, he was going to get hammered. He went, and he did. And we've got two minutes remaining, 17-0. Chicago leads. Seth Joyner bounces across the line. Right of the snap, number 62 of the offense, five yards, still third down. Dale Hammer, there's Mark Bortz, number 62. Ian Lewenberg and Fontenot, Vernus Smith, and John Wojciechowski are still there. Wojo is one of the players who played in the strike game here. In 1987, the last time the Bears played at the vet. There's John Wojciechowski. Chicago won that one 35 to 3. Anderson out to the 45 yard line. And there are about as many people left in the stands right now as there was that afternoon. Not a real good idea to play a scab game here in Philadelphia. No, no it wasn't. As a matter of fact, uh, they, they announced the crowd, I think, at 4,000 that day. It wasn't many. Fourth and a bunch, and Chris Gardaki is back to punt. Coming up, Chicago at Toronto. What a week in Chicago in sports news. I, have, I can't recall a week dominated by the news out of one city quite like what happened in Chicago this week. Beginning, of course, with Michael Jordan. Yeah, I heard they fired a manager, too. So, and with a winning record, I heard. Yeah. Tough town. Nice to be a sports talk show host in town. Didn't have to look for topics. Philip, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Bye week for the Bears next week, and oh, will they savor this one. They come to Philadelphia, take on the undefeated Eagles, and they've blanked them 17 nothing so far. Gardaki straight up and straight down, and Sekahima ignores Bob Christian and runs up to make the fair catch at 36. 
Well, let's go back and take a look at Jim.